Hey guys, here's five gymnastic skills you can do in your backyard while some eyes living during COVID-19. I'm a gymnast, I do gymnastics. Wouldn't you like to do gymnastics? If you're looking for a warm-up or a stretch, check out our COVID conditionings linked right up there. Let's get to it. All right, we are gonna show you the same wrist stretch that we did in our last video because we're gonna be using a lot of our hands today. So let's get started with that. So you're gonna be popping up and down off of your hands slowly at first and then speeding up as you go, trying to use your wrists and your shoulders or the muscles in them as much as possible. Try not to bend your elbows as much as you can. You're mostly trying to have it follow through your forearm and use your shoulders to pop here. That'll make this as good of a warm up as possible on your wrists. And then you'll try just as Jared is doing, hopping them back and forth in an X. Make sure to switch which hand is in front. All right, we are gonna do two different versions of a cartwheel today to take you farther. That'll be two of our skills. We'll show you both variations of that first, and then we'll explain how to do both of them. First up, Jared is going to show you a clown cartwheel. The second version of a cartwheel we're gonna to try today is a one-handed cartwheel. We're gonna use your lead hand and your trailing hand. Jared will just demonstrate the lead hand for now. Okay, so before we get started on the cartwheel variations, we're gonna remind ourselves how to do a cartwheel, which we taught you in our last gymnastics video inside your house. First up, you're gonna start with that rainbow drill where we do a cartwheel in a curve, and then we slowly bring it closer and closer. And then all Jared will do is slowly bring that circle narrower and narrower until it's more like a straight line towards you guys. As you're doing this, make sure that you're starting facing forwards and ending up with your belly button facing back where you came from. Now to change this into a clown car wheel, we're going to forget everything that I just told you. Instead of facing totally straight forward as he begins, he's gonna turn his belly button about 45 degrees towards the back foot. So Jared's gonna start the cartwheel with his hips turned 45 degrees towards his back foot, and when he finishes, he's also gonna be turned 45 degrees towards his back foot, which will be the other foot. Then all you're gonna do is you're gonna slowly turn more and more until you are straight sideways. You're gonna have to use your obliques, these muscles on the sides of your body, quite a bit to make this work, and it does require more flexibility. So some people will find this cartwheel actually easier than the square cartwheel, and some people will find it hard. Try and keep your belly button pointing forward the whole time, just like Jared just did, and that'll make this a lot easier. You can either look forward or you can look at the ground. I personally find looking at the ground easier, but if you're having a lot of trouble staying sideways, go ahead and do that. Now we're gonna try the one-handed cartwheel we mentioned earlier. We're gonna try it with both the lead hand, as in the first hand that goes down, and with the trailing hand, the second hand that goes down. We're gonna start with the lead hand because that is much easier to do. What you're gonna do is you're gonna start with the square cartwheel that we just learned in our other video, and you're going to try and do it with your second hand a little bit lighter on the ground. So not quite on like your fingertips or anything, but you're just gonna try and not put as much weight on that hand. You're gonna rely more on the first hand going down. Make sure your first hand is sideways, and your second hand is at least sideways, and if not, starting to turn a bit backwards towards the first hand. That's what we're looking for. Next, you'll try the same thing, but you'll try going up on your fingertips for real this time. And if you find that it's a little bit too light on your hands, all you gotta do is drop down onto that flat hand. Make sure you're not up like this, because you don't wanna actually crush your fingers as you go down. Just make sure that you're lifting them off the ground so they're ready to drop down a flat hand if need be. This one, your fingers are going to be touching, but you're gonna try and use them as little as possible. So just hover the hand over top, use it if you have to, but otherwise it's just your fingertips brushing and you're trying to use just that lead hand to push all the way over. It helps if you bring your legs down a little bit earlier here too, um, but you do need to be fairly flexible to use that as a pretty good crutch for this. And then finally, take the hand away. Nice. 
All right, so for this final one, we are going to now use the trailing hat. Be careful, this does not mean that you should switch feet. So it doesn't mean that you should switch directions. You're still gonna have the same foot forward, but instead of putting the same hand down that that foot is in front, so for instance, I cartwheel right foot, and that means my right hand goes down first, you're going to get rid of that first hand and just have the second hand, the backwards one, go down. So if you watch Jared, he's gonna fingertip his sideways hand, the first one, and he's going to more heavily put his weight on the second hand, the trailing hand. Make sure now, as you start finger tipping more and more, as we did in the last cartwheel with this lead hand now, that you're starting to turn your second hand, your trailing hand, backwards, so that you're really able to push off of it when you finish the cartwheel. And then finally, same as we did in the past, you'll have your hand ready to touch if need be, but if not, you're just gonna go for that second hand. Really make sure to push off of the front leg, our, our jumping leg, and kick nice and hard with your kicking leg. You're gonna need a lot of oomph from your legs here to get you over that first part of the cartwheel, and then the end is quite easy after you've got that hand down. For an extra challenge on either of these, just to kind of show off to yourself, you can fully pull your arm all the way out of the way. You can throw it behind your back, you can put it up to your chest, it's up to you. Either way, make sure that you've tried these a bunch with your hand ready though, because it is a little bit difficult to mid-air throw the hand back down there. So make sure you're quite comfortable with this first. All right, next up we're gonna try a skill that's normally done on the bars, but since most of us can't go to the playground right now, we're gonna try it on our nice sturdy fence. Now, to be clear, make sure this fence actually can hold up your weight. Jared and I are quite large, so we need a fairly sturdy fence to do this with, which this one is for us. In general, if you can find a fence though with a wooden top, that's even better. The chain link fences we will use in our parkour video later on, but they are a little bit awkward to do casts on because they often have little plastic bits sticking up over the top. So you can still use them if you want to, but it's a lot easier if you can find a flat topped wooden fence like the one we have here. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna learn how to just quickly climb up onto the fence so that you understand how to do that if at any point you start to fall over. So you're gonna do that by jumping up into what we call front support first, or climbing up. You've got your hands on top of the object and your hips are right on top of the bend over the fence. And then what you can do is you're gonna lift one leg up beside you and the other leg up in between your two hands. And then you can either stand up or you can just climb down and jump down to the other side. If you're climbing down, you can do it exactly in the opposite order, just like Jared just did, where he put one foot outside of his hands and the other foot lowered back down in between his hands. Make sure you've tried that on both sides before you move on, and then you can figure out which one is your favorite and which one works a little bit better. Once you're done with that, if you haven't already been doing it, you're gonna try practicing jumping to front support. Now, some of you might be a little bit too short and you might just need a stool or something to climb up to the fence, but if you can, you wanna try putting your hands on the object and then jumping with your legs, but also pushing up with your arms and pulling with your armpit muscles here nice and close so you can have your hips right up on the fence. Next up, you're gonna to jump to front support and then you're gonna cast back right off this. Now, because we're not on a bar, you have to do most of the work with your chest first. So Jared's gonna jump up, lean his chest forward a little bit and then kick his legs back and that's what'll land him on his feet. You can leave your hands on the fence as long as you want. Um, if you're a little bit worried about the landing, you can leave them on the whole time even while you land, but you are allowed to take them off as soon as you've pushed far enough away from the fence that you're not gonna hit it. Now we're gonna get a little bit more exciting. We're gonna try casting to that same position that we climbed on before. So you're gonna cast and lean forward a little bit more than you did before, and you're gonna end up with one leg on top of the fence instead. Then try the same thing on the other leg. And then you're gonna try and cast, land with the one foot on the top, and immediately climb right over. You can either climb through by putting the one leg through the middle of your arm and foot like Jared just did, or you can now try just bringing both feet over the side of the object and landing on the other side. Now before we move on to casting both legs up on top, we're gonna to do multiple casts in a row. Make sure that you're leaning forward a little bit more than you were before so that your hips stay on top. And really use your arms to hold you up here so that your hips don't have to take a ton of the impact. All right, this last one is just a challenge if you wanna try. We're gonna try what's called a cast to tuck on, landing with both feet in between your hands on the fence. You definitely do not have to try this. If you're going to though, you should try these bales first. 
So one is to cast like that and bring both feet around the side of your hands and over top of the fence. The other one is to cast and land on one foot and then end up stepping through the middle. The last one is something we'll use later on in our parkour videos as well, but it's called crane. You can try casting up and landing one foot in between your hands and the other foot will stay squished up against the wall, but down a little bit lower. All right, final challenge for this. Now you're gonna lean forward more than you did before. You're gonna cast both legs up behind you and then pop off of your shoulders and try and get both feet on. You have all the bales that you need to work with, so you definitely don't have to try this today, but this is a challenge for those of you guys who are finding this fairly easy. Next up, because in our past videos, you guys have already learned how to do a handstand, we're now gonna teach you how to walk on your hands. We'll show you that first, and then we'll explain how to do it. So the first thing that you wanna learn is exactly what Jared just used at the end of his walk. You wanna learn that cartwheel bail that we've done in our past videos on how to get out of the handstand if you start falling forwards. You can roll out on these, and if you've worked on the handstand roll before, you can use that, but if you've never tried this before, or you're just not super comfortable, the much safer and easier to learn way is to bail out by just cartwheeling down one side. The way you do that is as you're tipping forwards, move one hand out of the way and bring your legs down to that side. Try that on both sides by kicking not quite all the way up, but about just about 45 degrees. Okay, see if you can just barely kick it all and then just drop to the side. Yeah. Now before we go any farther, if you haven't already seen it before, make sure to go through our handstand video that we made in the past on our gymnastic skills that you can do in your house. Level two, I think, might have been level one, can't remember. Either way, make sure to look through that briefly and remind yourself of all the drills, especially if you've never tried this before, because this is just a progression for a handstand that you've already supposed to have learned. So if you haven't already learned it, no worries, jump back to that and then you can come back to us afterwards whenever you figure that out. Now a reminder to look at the ground through your eyebrows. If you just went through the videos, you would have been reminded of that, but if you didn't, we want to make sure that as we're up on our hands here, we're looking at, the, we're looking at our hands currently through our eyebrows. So we're not tipping our head all the way back like this. We're making sure that we see our hands just through our eyebrows. So it keeps your body still in straight line position and doesn't arch your back out, but it still allows you to see the ground, which you'll need to do while you're walking. All right, now, most people, when they try a handstand walk, look like this. If you notice this or recognize it in yourself, no problem, but this is what we're going to try and avoid. So, first of all, as we just talked about, Jared's head is sticking out, which is part of the reason. He's a little bit worried about going upside down, so he sticks his head out, and that's what stops him and arches him and makes the technique not quite as good and much harder to work with. The real problem, though, is he never actually fell forward. Whenever we're walking forwards, we tip forwards on our toes, and that's what makes us walk forwards. So if you never actually fall over in a handstand, you're never actually gonna walk anywhere. So what we're gonna try instead is, you're gonna kick up in your handstand that you've already learned, and whatever direction you fall, that's the direction that you're gonna start walking. Sideways, backwards, forwards, doesn't matter. As you get better at this, try on purpose leaning different directions. So kick up, fall back and walk backwards. Kick up, fall and walk forwards. Kick up, fall and walk sideways. Once you've got those down, that's all there is to it. You pick the direction that you wanna walk, and other than that, you keep your body as tight as you can, you try and keep your legs together, try and keep your tummy tight, look at the ground through your eyebrows, and whichever way you tip, that's where you wanna go. Now, if you wanna keep walking forwards, make sure that you're still tipping forwards, and then you dig your fingertips in so that you never quite fall over, so that you never had quite have to do that cartwheel down. That's our last little secret we're doing. So as you're falling forward, practice the amount that you have to dig your fingertips in, just like when you're walking, you're always tipped forward a little bit, but you're always pushing back with your toes enough that you don't fall on your face. All right, our final skill is a round off. We're also gonna learn it with a power hurdle just to give you a bit of a variation on our whole cartwheel theme of today's video. So we're gonna learn power hurdle round off, which we'll show you first, and then we'll teach you how to do it. 
The reason we learned this is to build up to true power tumbling. So being able to do round off back handspring, round off whip, round off back tuck, back layout. This is where we get the real powerful tumbling coming from. So most people see that it seems to look somewhat like a cartwheel just with your feet together, but there are some real differences that we're gonna teach you to make sure you understand. And we're also gonna teach you the power hurdle, that jump Jared did into it, to make sure that you can start building that into the power that you're working up with. So lots of people like to just run into the skill, but knowing how to do a power hurdle makes a really big difference. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take your square cartwheel that we already did, and you're now gonna practice popping through your shoulders right as you're upside down and gonna to come to your feet. So you're gonna do kind of a popping cartwheel. It's gonna look like this. So you wanna work on the timing and make sure that the pop happens right before you hit upside down, just that moment right before. It blocks your movement forward a little bit and changes it to upwards. So if you watch Jared one more time, the pop happens just before he's upside down to really launch him up onto his feet. So most of you, when you're first learning your cartwheel, will have both hands sideways. What we now wanna change it to is what we call T hands, where first hand is sideways and the second hand is backwards. This helps you turn your hips around much quicker so you can get nice and square or in line so that your power tumbling goes straight one way instead of having to go around the side like that uh, rainbow cartwheel that we did earlier. We'll show you a video of that now. Now you're going to do an early turning cartwheel. So you're gonna do the regular cartwheel that you've been doing, but now you're gonna start turning your belly button around much earlier before we would start the cartwheel facing forwards, upside down we'd be sideways, and when we finish we'd be backwards. Now you're gonna try and be backwards by the time you're upside down. So you're gonna turn yourself around much faster, still step down like a cartwheel, but watch Jared's belly button and it'll be turned all the way away from you. By the time he's upside down, he's gonna try and have his back still pointing at us. So there he had lots of time to look down at the ground, really pop off of his hands. We're much more powerful this way than we are this way. Our body is just built that way, so if we can turn ourselves around faster, we're able to snap down nice and easily and turn this into a round off. So now, do the exact same thing, no need to hurdle or anything, and we're gonna just put your feet together. So, as you go over the top, you snap your legs together. By then, hopefully, you're already turned around all the way backwards, and you pop off your shoulders like we just practiced onto both feet. All right, now that you've got your feet coming together over the top, we're gonna to teach you how to do a power hurdle, which will make this much easier. If you're having trouble doing this just from standing, that's totally okay, it is much easier from a power hurdle, so we're gonna teach you that next. We're gonna show you a power hurdle round off again, but this time, look at just the beginning. Jared's gonna do pretty much what looks like a squat jump into his round off. We're gonna teach you how to do that. Yeah. So Jared is leaping from both feet to go as far as he can and spread this round off out and then is splitting his feet apart to turn it into the beginning of a round off. So we're going to try learning these two different ways. One is by breaking it down very in depth, which we'll do second. And the first one is by kind of just telling you to try it because everybody is usually able to get it through one or the other. So first of all, you're just going to try and do a squat jump. So if you look at Jared, he's going to squat down, put his arms behind him, swing them up and jump as far as he can. Once you've tried that, you're simply going to do that into either a cartwheel or a round off. Just jump as far as you can and then do the cartwheel or round off. Now, for some of you, that will have just happened naturally and it'll work quite well. For those of you who are having trouble with it, no worries. Now we'll break it down so you can understand how it works. What we're trying to do here is we are trying to jump forward and land on the back foot. So what some people accidentally do is they jump onto their front foot, which as you can tell, does not work. Instead, what you want to do is you want to jump and flip backwards the tiniest, tiniest bit so that you land on your back foot and then you can step forward onto the front foot. So practice just jumping forward and landing on your back foot only. Because to stay on your back foot, you actually have to back flip a little bit, which is good practice. For this. Then you'll try jumping and landing on the back foot and immediately stepping onto the front foot. Now, once again, try putting this together and starting either your cartwheel, or if you've already figured it out pretty well, your round off. If you're still noticing you're having trouble with this, you can play with distances as well. Try and make your power hurdle or the first jump really far or a little bit shorter. Sometimes people have different issues. Sometimes people have trouble with this because they're jumping too far or too short. <laughs> Sometimes they have issues because they're jumping too far or too short. 
Last thing for round offs, make sure that you are snapping your legs together right up over the top and trying to keep them together the whole time. You want them to go over top of your head, not around the side. So we'll have Jared go this direction so you can see right from behind him as he snaps his legs right over the top. Great, thanks for watching. If you'd like to finish off these skills with a workout at the end, check out our COVID conditionings right up there. And we'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!